This is a full match in ranked PvP playing the Hammer Core Warrior. Now there are some different ways to play this. There's the Spellbreaker build and then there's this version with the defense trait line. And the Spellbreaker has a little bit more boon removal which is nice. But you have to CC someone to get that boon removal unless you're using dagger. So I feel like the, the idea of that really doesn't work out too well and you have to give up a lot of sustain anyways. So I prefer to play it with the core warrior which allows you to take defense and it allows you to take the uh, merciless hammer trait and strength because you have enough sustain that you don't need might makes right which allows you to play a more hammer centric build because you get a lot of adrenaline whenever you CC someone and that allows you to land more three bars of adrenaline bursts and with cleansing ire that's going to cleanse a lot of conditions and give you the adrenal health for the sustain so i really like the idea of the core hammer warrior with greatsword and it's just a fun play style that many might remember from the past so we capped far at the start their thief just left and my team went into mid and died because they were a little bit outnumbered while i was capping so we're going to come into mid now and just get the decap here while my team tries to regroup so we're not in a bad spot here but i do want to stall the enemy so they don't keep getting kills and you know snowballing us so i am kiting around here i get my heal off by using terrain there i didn't get headshotted because it was a little bit late because they had to get in line of sight and now i'm just trying to survive i endure pain their lich form go into rampage which is going to give me more toughness and health and i'm just going to disengage until i can find a better opening resustain and recover from that lich form i land a pretty decent earth shaker there but i really want to be focusing this necro because they're kind of low i backbreaker them and land my cc's on them a really big arcing slice there which gets two kills so now we're in a pretty good spot here i mean we've died at home due to the ramifications of the mid fight being lost but we did win mid after all eventually so now I'm going to be heading into far. I'm going to be playing the role of a duelist with this build, but you can still play it as a DPS. The thing is though, with the current meta, you're going to be fighting a lot of core guardians in team fights, and that's going to be a lot of stability in Aegis. So that is one issue, but there are also a lot of core necromancers and a lot of CC is always good against core necromancer because they are very slow and susceptible to CC. And when they go in Shroud, they don't have access to any stun bricks. So as you can see here, they're in Shroud. Um, they're gonna run out of Shroud here anytime soon, but yeah, they cannot use stun bricks while they're in Shroud, which makes them very easy for this build to just get damage on them and get their Shroud out of the way. So the, the tankiness is kind of counteracted by the fact that I do so much damage when they can't stun break. So, yeah, they go in Shroud here. I land my CC combo. They stun break out, but they're forced to leave Shroud to stun break out. And that allows me to start hitting their health bar. But I do see their second Necro is coming back in. I get corrupted on my stability, so I'm just going to back out. And just wait for a better you know, engagement because I am holding two here. It's both their Necromancers, so they're going to be rotating out slowly anyways. So if I hold both of them here, it's pretty good. Now I do land a really good uh, 7k there with the hammer too. And yeah, I just keep going in and out and baiting the second necro to come back, wasting their time. If they want to waste their time, so be it. If my team doesn't get anything out of it, then maybe I need to have a little bit more presence. But yeah, it's I'm doing as much as I can. Land a really good at hammer two there into the hammer five and then another hammer two into the arcing slice. So that was an insane damage combo there because they didn't have any stun breaks left. And yeah, we're going to be able to 2v1 this necro now because we got that kill very easily. And I do tank the uh, enfeebling blood there, which is not good because I don't want to have weakness on me. But another thing is that the greatsword with core will give you the arcing slice, which gives you fury, right? And fury has a longer duration for how much adrenaline you use to, to use that arcing slice. And this build does kind of have a little bit of a lack of uh, crit chance that it needs. 
uh, because you you have the Intel Sigil and Greatsword, right? But then when you go into Hammer, you don't have really any way to crit. So your 7k Hammer 2s, it's not too often that they happen because you have low crit chance and not too much Fury application. So it is nice that there, I mean, there is one reason why to have, you know, core Greatsword Arcing Slice is that Fury uptime. A little bit of a uh, long-winded rant there about Fury of Time, which I didn't really need to make, but you get the point. So we're just kiting around here trying to land. As you can see, I landed my uh, Earthshaker there because I got three stacks of Adrenal Health, which was nice. So yeah, the Adrenal Health, you can also use that on pets, and it's a 300 heal per second with three stacks of it. And you're going to have three stacks very often because this build gets a ton of its... Yeah, I'm changing my uh, settings there because I couldn't see the node captures. But um, yeah, the the CC that you can give out also gives you a lot of adrenaline. And since you're doing these very high costing adrenaline bursts all the time, you're going to often have a lot of cleansing from cleansing ire and adrenal health. Now, my teammate here, I should have helped them earlier, but I thought that they would survive long enough for me to get the, the bell there. But they didn't, and they're going to rally this necro. But we do down them twice conveniently so we're going to be able to keep them down here i'm just using adrenal health on the down body or one of my bursts on the down body to get adrenal health so i can get sustain you know in this uh, team fight i have to worry about blinds because if i want to land my big earth shakers yeah i'm gonna need to not get blinded i land a really good bulls charge into my earth shaker there and we're gonna take out the core necro there as well but my ally goes down, I land an Earthshaker here to try to prevent them from getting stomped. Really big, fierce blow there as well. I'm going to try to revive our ally here. And yeah, their Necros are coming in. We get the revive though before they're able to cleave us. And I've got my Earthshaker ready, but it misses the Necro. But I have so much CC that I can just CC the Necro through its stability. And we're going to probably go for a yeah Rampage here. And I could go for the stomp with stability, but I do want to counter cleave or counter pressure them a lot. I get blinded there again on my Earthshaker, which is not very good because those are some big presence abilities to be landing in the team fight. I land a really good Earthshaker here though, which I combo into my backbreaker into another fierce blow and we get an arcing slice to finish off the Ellie there. So yeah, any build that is very susceptible to CC this build will really punish them and we're just reviving that there so we can get the rally they actually don't rally so we're gonna need to probably res that my earth shaker did not land there i got blinded again so yeah you can see that the uh, weakness to warrior is still blind and this build doesn't deal with blind any better than uh well any other warrior build except maybe spellbreaker and um yeah we're gonna be getting out of here we got the bell but we're all very low so it's not the worst i mean we're gonna probably lose that fight but we got the bell so now for yeah our ranger's really low and i'm gonna try to peel for them by getting this core necro off of them get a really good arcing slice here and i get them down i use a little bit of my uh greatsword roll along the wall there I tried to retarget the uh, backbreaker there, but for some reason it wasn't in range. And I'm trying to cleave, but yeah, I've got weakness on me. I have to heal myself to get rid of the weakness so I can do damage again. Really big earth shaker there, but my uh, ally goes down because they were already so pressured. I'm trying to CC them off the down body, but it's not enough. And I'm going to have to just disengage with rampage. So at this point, uh, we're got a pretty good hold on the map and i see their necro is kind of low still but i use earthshaker in the wrong spot i had my mouse in the wrong spot and i actually didn't earthshaker the necro and because of that they weren't stunned and they could fear me after the pet cc'd me there so i probably got destroyed by the uh the pet there but also the necro not being stunned there allowed them to uh chain cc me so yeah, you do want to be very mindful of the positioning of your Earthshakers because it's such an important skill to land, but it's also so telegraphed. So it's really important to predict where your enemy is going to be and make sure that you land those Earthshakers because they're so high presence 
and they're going to give you a lot of your traits to trigger. So at this point, the spoiler alert, the match is going to be over because our team is going to win the bell without me. But that is pretty much how you want to play the Hammer Core Warrior. So here's another ranked match as the Hammer Warrior. And we talked a little bit about the difference between a Duelist and a DPS. But one thing that really makes this build sort of worse than, you know, a Spellbreaker is obviously it's not using the shield, right? You, you don't have a shield because you have the hammer and the hammer it's, you know, it's good. But in these team fights like this, you know, we're fighting against a core guardian here. And you're going to have a lot of stability. So it's probably better to have a Spellbreaker with the dagger to remove boons so you can CC them. But... I can still use Rampage and I can still use Greatsword to do damage. So it's, you know, it's still possible if I can just fill in the gap between their stability and stability has been nerfed a little bit on the Core Guardian. So we do land the Bull's Charge there. It's going to allow us to get another CC on their entire team here with the uh, Earthshaker. And the Earthshaker is a really important ability to this build because it is the mobility. So even though you don't have shield to survive you do have the earth shaker which is mobility which can help you survive and cc always will help you survive right and you can do a little bit of a jump here across this uh this little gap here and can't really do that on anything else with a warrior so i mean that is pretty good kiting ability and yeah so if you're standing on node with this build you're probably going to struggle but if you're kiting off node and you're you're good with your positioning then you have a lot more potential position because the hammer gives you more mobility. So that's kind of uh, a trade-off that you got there with this build. But yeah, when you get focused by a lot of players and then they interrupt your earth shakers, it's gonna, you're gonna struggle, right? So generally like to not be outnumbered on this build. Do land a really good uh, bulls charge there and backbreaker, but the mesmer is on me now. I use the earth shaker there to get out of range, but yeah, I'm getting heavily pressured the Guardian actually shared their F1 to the clones there, and that gave me nine sacks of burn. But my support is here, and they're gonna revive me with their uh, their glyph. And I'm just gonna kite off a little bit, resustain, wait for them to push back in because if I go back in right now, then all three of them, you know, the Guardian, the Necro, and the Mesmer are just going to jump me. So I want to wait till they kind of like go on my team, and then I'll push in too far. And it looks like the Necro is going to take the 1v1 against me. And they just double dodge, so I'm going to be able to land my uh, Backbreaker there. But um, yeah, they go in Shroud, so now they have no access to Stun Break, so I can just CC them. I do have Weakness, and their Mesmer is now going to be... Uh, jumping on me again so we're just trying to kite over here and survive because i am you know I, I don't have the ability to fight on node so i need to use terrain here one thing that's really good is when i can land my burst skills on the clones like that i gain adrenal health even though i'm not really trying to do damage to the clones necessary which i can do that too but I'm just trying to get Adrenal Health, which is going to give me 300 healing per second. So that sustain is going to be really good. Now, the Mesmer wasted all their cooldowns trying to chase me. So our Deadeye is going to take them out. And now they're going to leave because, yeah, this uh, Core Necro has the shield buff there. And they're just going to be really tanky. So it's better for my team to rotate out. So they did a good play there. The Necro dodges. And Necros only have two dodges. So they're going to need to dodge all of my stuff. I land the backbreaker, then dodge because I don't want to get weakness from the enfeebling blood there. I use endure pain to stun break and I look and I see yeah the mesmer because we know the mesmer is respawning. So I'm going to try to get out of there with the hammer F1. Try to kite and I can probably use it, uh, one of my burst skills here to get adrenal health as well yeah, on those clones. Prevent them from shattering on me as well. And... Now, yeah, we've given up the node to the Necro, so I have to take the 1v1 again, but now they have the node, so it's quite a disadvantage to get plus one there. And we get a really good knock there. I use my Arcing Slice for some Fury, and I do land a, an Earthshaker into the Backbreaker there and get some really good damage, which is going to get them to like 50% HP. 
So we're doing pretty well. I do eat an enfeebling blood there and my I get feared in my Earthshaker. So we're kind of getting kited here, but they are out of shroud. So I can land my bull's charge as soon as they dodge. Um, they're actually going in shroud here, so I can go for the CC. And a little bit of a misprioritization of the CC combo there, but they're gonna fight for the node still and they're gonna get killed by my CC combo off node. So that's really nice because now we can just cap the node while they bleed. We're getting extra value out of them being in the down state. So my team is, they've got a kill on the thief, but it's pretty even on the map otherwise. So I'm gonna probably go into mid and see what I can do because I know that Necro is gonna respawn and probably decap the node. So I wanna get something done quickly before the uh, you know the Necro respawns and does that. So I am coming into mid and see if I can hold that to uh, keep it from being fully capped. My Thief doesn't stay though, they go for the buff, which I guess is fine. And I'm just gonna try to CC and use my burst skills just to get adrenal health and to survive. I have to use my cleanse there because that's six burning, I would just die there. And I'm gonna use my Bull's Charge to get out of here. Gonna get some adrenal health as well from my uh, burst there. And the Mesmer is playing very aggressively, so I'm using my heal skill. I do get blinded here. I'm gonna try to CC, yeah, but I'm, I keep getting blinded here. And their Hollow Smith is actually here as well, so I'm gonna try to kite. My support is behind me, but I really don't have anything to survive that, so I'm just gonna keep kiting out. And I'm actually gonna get my heal off, so this is really good. And I'm just going to try to counter pressure this hollow smith, see if I can kill them. But yeah, I missed my CC. The support is now on me, so I don't really need to worry about kiting as much. We can just go fight on the node again, but there's a lich form there. So I'm just going to line of sight until that's gone. And I, yeah, I see our rev is down, but there's not much I can do about that. So we're just going to try to focus this necro, get a really good bull's charge while they're in shroud, force them to leave and use their stun break. And we're gonna keep chasing here with our Hollow Smith with the the Earth Shaker there. Now I do I don't really have much here, and I actually get immobilized after my Earth Shaker is cast. If I would have waited for the Earth Shaker uh, until you know I waited till I was immobilized to use Earth Shaker, I would have actually removed the immobilized. So it was kind of bad timing on my part because I knew that that would happen, right? Because that's their shroud ability; it does that. So we are still gonna get the kill here anyways. I'm gonna try to go for a stability stomp, but they have the res from the signet. The mesmer is now on me, so I'm gonna try to kite towards the node and I'm just gonna swap there to get the mobility from the hammer. Now I can't get the full cap because the, yeah, the mesmer is just playing very aggressively and the thief is actually here as well. And I'm going to die here, so. The Mesmer could go for the res, but I think they're gonna get CC'd, yeah. So I'm gonna die and uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. So yeah, when you're getting you know, ganked by a bunch of assassins, you really need to have that mobility. And yeah, unfortunately it wasn't enough still. So when I respawn here, we're gonna see what, where I'm gonna go probably mid because it looks like the Deadeye is holding far by themselves, they're capping it alone. So I'm gonna head to mid, but it does look like our Tempest goes down and without a support in a team fight, it's really not gonna be, yeah, it's not gonna end well. So I'm just gonna leave that before I even go in. And you can see their health bars are so low, so they're just gonna die. Now the Hollow Smith here, we're gonna try to take the 1v1 with them. The Deadeye is actually here with me and they're gonna be forced into the Elixir S because they can't tank that while stunned and they're just gonna kite off with rocket boots so i'm gonna cap the node i see their mesmer is coming in so i'm gonna just try to cap the node and then try to help my teammate just break the aegis there through the wall with my hammer three yeah the hammer three skill is actually really good because it's so easy to use and it does a decent amount of damage and cripples so i'm just gonna kite out of here because i'm getting 2 v one I land a really good Earth Shaker there, which is going to give me a little bit of adrenal health. I don't have um, too much adrenaline there, but I'm just going to kite out of here, use my mobility here, and I'm actually going to probably go back in. Yeah, I just get 
power blocked every time I try to cast. So that is one issue with the warrior build, right? Is that every one of my animations is very uh, telegraphed. So it's not it's not the best against Mesmer's for sure. But I am going to land a really big uh, CC lock combo. We get the Elixir S out of the engineer again. And now we're going to probably, well, the I see the Necro is really low. So maybe I want to go for them. I know the Hollow Smith already has the node. So potentially not the best thing to fight for. Uh, yeah, but I am getting chased pretty hard here and I go down. So you want to be getting out of those situations where people are focusing you and then yeah just resustain before you go in because there's no reason to die or your teammates get outnumbered so i'm going to respawn here and probably head into well probably mid to help my support peel out looks like my dead eye is going to get far so yeah we're going to try to help our support here see if we can cc but yeah we're a little bit late here and the thief is just gonna port out of that so i have to survive here and it's gonna be difficult because now there's like three on me and my support just died so i have to essentially survive while you know being zerged here and my support is on respawn so i'm gonna use my mobility from the hammer here and i'm actually doing pretty well with the terrain i'm gonna have to bulls charge for the evade and to stun them and I actually make it out in time for my support to arrive. So we're just going to try to keep staying near my support. Don't run around so they can't support me. And now we're just going to re-engage and try to go for the kill on the Mesmer here. Get a really good arcing slice. But yeah, the Lich is on me. We have a little bit of reflect here from the support. So I can go more aggressively again. And now there's support here is gonna go for the signet but i land my cc on them right as the stability ends and we're actually able to get the kill there as well now we're just gonna keep chasing these kills and yeah they're gonna take the port back so i'm just gonna head into far and resume playing a more duelist oriented role now the thief is here at far which is not the best matchup because i don't deal with blinds too well but we do land a really good hit there and they're actually forced to use both of their stun breaks here. So if I land another CC, they're pretty much dead. So yeah, this is going to be a very good 1v1 for me. But their Mesmer is now coming in. So until I see where the Thief is, I don't want to, you know, invest too much into that node. I see their Necro though is pretty low. I land a non-crit 4k Fierce Blow. That would have crit. That would have done a lot of damage. But... Um, yeah, I'm getting chased, so I just kite off, try to resustain. The engineer here is maybe not the best target, but also, yeah, they have a lot of support here because their guardian is here and our thief is dead. So maybe we want to just stall the node and not play too aggressively. So I'm going to kite off, get the bulls charge on the mesmer and then earth shaker them. They're going to be forced to blink out. So we've got some cooldowns out of the way. Um, I'm going to Rampage here just because I'm trying to get the kill, but yeah, they're on terrain already, so there's not much I can do there. I get some Adrenal Health from the clone, and I'm just going to kite out because we have a trip cap, and all we need to do is just survive. I see my NG, though, is on the node, so I'm going to try to trade aggro with them, so when they're on the node, I'll try to play aggressively, and when they're off the node, I'll try to stand on the node and defend. So yeah, generally, you know, I'm not the best person to defend, but probably better than the engineer here so we're just playing aggressively trying to cc and i did use my heal skill there at full health maybe because i didn't expect to take no damage i expected to take some damage while casting that but yeah that was kind of a bad heal there because now i need my heal and i don't have it so i'm gonna just die on the node and um yeah the rest of my team is getting value out of this because now we're 2v3 so we're just gonna slowly win this match with the rest of the nodes and that is pretty much how you play the hammer warrior so if you like this content then like the video subscribe and i will see you all next time